this has definitely made the whole kill site here a lot smoother, you know, and having the right number of cones. Mm -hmm. you know, because again, and I and I just mentioned to you before, I mean, the biggest problem is on the kill site is, you know, you get interruptions. You're always interrupted. Something always happens. The chicken hops out. Yeah. Uh, you have to go do something or whatever. But out here, something always seems. To and this will be the bottleneck. Right. Right. And I kind of look at this like plumbing. You know, you got to have. This is like my. I charge my pressure tank. <laughs> yeah. Getting extra yeah. capacity here. It's the first step. Right. Because if you think about it, if you're going for a five minute hang time so you can get a proper bleed, you know, it's five minutes before you can scald and pluck. And then that means these guys are sitting there for five minutes. So one interruption okay. is, yes. is a traumatic. Yeah, it, it really slows things up. But So let's back up and, and address the five minute bleed five out because that has got to be controversial. Where, how did you come up with that? Um, Five minutes, in my opinion, gets the right amount of blood out of the chicken. I feel like anything less than five minutes gets bloody at evisceration. <laughs> Entertainment in the background. I feel like it's, you know... So I, there'll be more work in the evis room. Right. Which is always the back gut that's, anyway. That's right. And, and, here, and here's my thought. When you process chickens, the butcher portion of this, the, the harvest, is, in my opinion, the fastest portion. You know, it takes a lot more time to package chicken. So typically, you're going to have more people that want to work at harvest that are going to want to work, you know, in this part of the, 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 you know, this is what everybody's excited about doing. Yep. So these are steps that we take in this process when we have more manpower to limit the amount of work we have to do with packaging. So a proper bleed out is one of the steps. Yeah. A proper scald and pluck and getting the birds super clean, you know, before they go into a chill tank is another step. Yeah. And then we set these, the distance between the two drums are designed for two turkey cones, two of your large turkey cones. Uh -huh. So that way they can both rotate. Sure, sure. And so... And so how many turkey cones will they hold? This will hold uh, 12 total. So six each side. Yeah, yeah. And why do you have them numbered? batches so basically we run uh you know what's going on is we start off with 12 here and we end up at 24 here so this is the last cone so if i divide uh, the number of cones here by three will i get your batch size yes that's right and what do we have 18 for a batch size of six that's correct okay and upon the number the size of the batch you can you know it's divisible by that so if we're doing groups of six then we know one through six seven through twelve 13 through you'll even never 18. grab a bird that's not right in the right batch that's, right. that's not bled out enough yeah oh that's, that's brilliant and so that's you know and by having all these positions we can orient these cones however we want so since we're running batches of 18 or uh, groups of 18 or batches of six so three batches of six 18 cones this allows us to you know i have six on this and 12 here so i just know this is a group and that's two groups you know and so if i were to do 24 three batches of eight it would be, you know, eight, and be half here, half to here, then the, the next eight. You know, or if I were to do groups of four, you know, then I would only need about 12 cones and I'd go down to one drum. You know, so this kind of allows me to change to based on what we're... You're being photobombed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's good at that. Let's just follow Ethan around. But, but this allows us to really change depending upon what we're processing. If we're processing turkey, if we're going slow, like with ducks, we'd go a lot slower. Yeah. So we're going to only use one drum. You know, if we're right. gonna, if we're going right. to do a heritage bird, we yeah. might just be one drum. We might be doing batches of four. Yeah. If we're doing uh, something that flies, like the Cornish, it could be batches of six to eight. You know, so mm -hmm. and then we'll use a both drum. Like a pallet. Yeah, it's exactly that. This is designed to be picked up by the tractor and moved around. The number of cones that we have, it's just increasing hang time for chicken. The longer the hang, I mean, the better the better the inside of the bird looks the less blood there's going to be less time cleaning up inside yeah. the room have you ever let chickens stay in the cone long enough to notice a setup time not really this is what it looks like inside the current kill cones so basically this is a 5 16 top or i'm sorry one and five eighths top rail so this is a one and five eighths yeah chain so link is, fence top rail yep yeah. and it's did a you, heavier gauge did you turn it down no, you, this, you they, stuff they, something inside. They come pre-nippled like this. Oh, that's that's the way they come. Yeah. So you can connect. Which which is perfect because this is yeah. where that bearing flange sits is on this nipple uh, bevel right here. So that's a shoulder that holds your yes. tub your drum up. That's right. Oh, so we, we're getting the inside scoop here. The secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you call this contraption again? We call this the Porter Reaper. 
So this is our small portable model. So when we harvest large turkeys in the field, we can do it in the field, not stress them with getting them back to the to the processing area. Yeah. And uh, is that light enough for Ethan to pull? Yeah. What? Normally, you just hook it up to the back yeah. of the UTV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Faster. Faster. Go on, Ethan. Let's see. Let's see how. <laughs> Somewhere we can grab that. I call it the polluting of the cones with oil. Oil. Because you don't just lightly spray it on. No, you have to. You pollute it. You pollute, really it. Get it, you pollute it. Yeah, you do. We're really trying to, you know, unfortunately, aerosol is really the best way to do it, just for coverage. But I would like another solution. We're going to, Mom's planning on getting a brush and a bucket. You know, I thought about doing, yeah, just like a, a, swab. a pump sprayer, honestly. I was wondering if a pump sprayer would do it. So, from uh, Tractor Supply, this is a one and a half inch bearing flange. So basically, there's there's a piece of metal on the bottom, and it sandwiches up top. Cut, take two. Bearing flange, take two. Uh, uh, yeah, I see it. It's yeah. Uh, pretty rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So basically, yeah. all that does is, and we just literally just grease those and it just rides right on the flange. Just because we're only turning this thing, you know what, 30 rotations in one day, it's like there's no, you're not gonna doesn't, have any heat build up or wear or anything like that on these. Uh -huh. So as long as you keep a little grease in there, I just use, I honestly just use a little canola oil because that's what we coat the cones with, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just spray those before we get started. In flange Okay, size. so is that a one and three quarter or so two? It's approximately one and three quarters uh -huh. because this is a one and five H uh, uh, pipe. That could not be more simple. 